The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Money Masters. Your Money Masters, Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes. Welcome, folks, to the Money Masters show. I'm Steve Rhodes here. We got the Dow up 68 points right now. S&P's up 9, Composite up 12, Small Cap's up uh, 5 points right now. Let's take a look at uh, everything else here. We've got uh, gold. Gold uh, trading up 90 cents, so not really much movement out there out at 1697. Silver, no movement as well. Very flat up uh, a penny here right now. Up at uh, 32, 31. Light sweet crude up 88 cents. That's trading out at 87, 61. Around the uh, globe here, the uh, DAX right now trading up about five points out at 76.02. The uh, FTSE down 19 points. The FTSE is rejecting a uh, area of resistance, uh, trading out at 59.03 over in Asia last night. You had the Nikkei up 91 points, uh, closing out at 98.28. The story there of the Nikkei is it uh, gapped up and sold off all night long. Uh, selling, uh, closing at its session lows out there. The uh, Shanghai up 10 points, uh, closing on a 22.62, and the Hang Seng down 92, down about four tenths of a percent at 22.513. Our call number is 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the indexes, see what they're doing here. You've got the cash S&P traded out at 14.2284. You can see Cash S&P trading right into the uh, trend line here, just dancing along that trend line. That is the trend line coming off of the October 4th uh, low there. You can draw this on your charting system. So you got that low, and you would use the uh, June 4th low out there as well. You can see just trading right into it. If we take a look at the S&P, we can see this little red horizontal line. If you are watching this on Tiger TV, that's a beautiful thing. Maybe you're listening on the radio. Perhaps it is your mobile device at tfn.mobi. This show is archived on Channel 10, so you can always take a look at the uh, charts uh, that way by watching the uh, archive. You can see here the red horizontal line going across the screen is an area of resistance. The last time that it was up there was on December 12th when it got up to a high of 1438.59, created that little shooting star candle out there, followed up by this bearish engulfing. That three candle pattern is an evening star. So you had a, it was coming into a resistance area. It's a very strong resistance. Uh, if uh, you're uh, bullish, what you want to be taking a look at is you want to see how the 1438.59 level would be handled. You would like to see it close over that. That is a natural area of resistance. Uh, and uh, so you've got that red horizontal line. The top of that price is around 1434. So your range is 1435, let's call it, to 1439 out there. You'd want to see it close above 1439. From a bear standpoint, you want you really want to see is you want to go take a look at the relative strength indicator that we have here down at the bottom because although we've had a, a sell-off here for a, a two-day session Thursday and Friday out there with a Wednesday reversal out here, uh, what you did not get, you did not get that relative strength index on the S&P 500 down below the 50 mark. Why is that important? Well, if you just simply take a look at any uh, rallies, you see some decent relative strength. Anytime it's above 50, you've got pretty good relative strength. Just come back here and take a look at the off of the June 4th level. Just come back, take a look at June 4th. You can see once it got up above that area, how it basically stayed up there as prices moved higher on Friday, got down to a level of about 52, 51, and a little bit of change out there. So, uh, you know, the bears need to see the uh, relative strength start to move to the uh, downside. As And also, if you start to take a look at what happens when you get below that area, just take a look at uh, uh, coming off of the highs here back in October, uh, October the uh, 5th, 2012. So you can see once the relative strength getting down below that area, that is what you want to see certainly from a, a bearish standpoint out there. Let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange because the New York Stock Exchange really has been, as you know, the strong index out here. The New York Stock Exchange also traveled up into a resistance zone. Both the uh, red line, which is the swing point low from September 14th, uh, that level is 84.3792. Uh, last week on Wednesday, the New York Stock Exchange got up in, or very close level, didn't actually hit it. Again, 84.37. Uh, let's call it 84.38. It got up to 84.34, so just about four points away. What it did run into was its previous swing point. That happened to be October 18th level, 
rejected that. Didn't really close out as a shooting star, but it was close enough to let you know that the uh, Bears were in control as it got into a resi as the New York Stock Exchange got into a resistance area. However, as it moved down on Wednesday, uh, on Thursday and Friday, what uh, was holding it at bay is this little open window here. That open window that I'm referring to is the December 10th uh, level. The high there is 83.30.51. Gaps up on the next trading session on the 11th. That right now is an area that has been tested twice. You like to see it tested, you know, three or more times out there, but that level still has held. So now you've got the uh, New York Stock Exchange just traveling with inside a relatively tight area out there. And, uh, you know, this could, uh, this is not overbought. So the New York Stock Exchange is not in overbought territory. It's moving towards it, but it is not in overbought territory, at least not yet. Let's go take a look at the other indexes out here. Let's take a look at the, uh, that was New York Stock. Let's take a look at the NDX 100. Why the NDX 100? Well, really, it's really all about Apple. Apple trading at 506.25. Apple trying to close below Stevie's hammer candle. That's a November 16th level. We'll go take a look at that here in just a few moments. Uh, down about seven tenths of a percent here. Uh, Apple probably will give us the biggest clue as to the direction in the marketplace. As we take a look at the NDX 100, you can see that that is really trying to break below an area of of uh, support out here. I'm going to draw that line on the screen for you. We'll do that in black. And that's going to be the gap up on November 23rd out here. Uh, on November 23rd, you can see that gap has held. It's been tested once on Friday's session. It moved down towards towards that level. It's still trading inside the swing point from November 23rd. That high is 2640 out there. So not giving you any information. Uh, if you're bullish, you want a, you know a, a, another test of that window from November 23rd. That low would be 2614, and it closed back above it. That would be a, a good sign. You would have gotten at least uh, two tests in there right now. From a bearish standpoint, you want to see that level crack. You want to see, quite frankly, it closed below the November 21st high, that which is 2604.51. Trade at 2636.28 right now. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow. You've got the uh, Dow up 70 points right now. Let's go see what the uh, Dow is uh, doing out here. The Dow trading into what we'll call an ultra, uh, an ultra uh, trend line that it broke, and that was just simply coming off of the uh, low of November 16th. Your next touch point on this, you could either be the candle of November 28th. Uh, in my case here, I just simply chose December 5th out there, that low, 12,923, which also happened to coincide with the low of uh, Thursday, which was 12,000, I'm sorry, low, 13,147. Friday broke through that. Once you break a trend line, now that's quite an ascent that it has had, that the Dow has had. Off of the November 16th highs, you break a trend line, it's supposed to go up and test it. That's what you've got going on with the Dow here right now. The Dow also testing a horizontal a resistance area that happened to be, in essence, the downdraft from October 23rd, but was really set up by the high of November 2nd, the high of November 6th. That was tested on Tuesday last week, December 11th, as well as giving that candle uh, not a shooting star, but certainly what uh, what the market was doing was testing that resistance area. The bears came in on the 12th on Wednesday, uh, won that session, really won the session here of Thursday on December 13th. So you, what you're looking for from a bullish standpoint, you'd like to see the Dow get back inside that, you know, that really steep ascending uh, triangle uh, out there. Uh, that is actually a bearish pattern. Uh, as we uh, as we take a look at it, but what I, what I really what, I, what I'm referring to is coming off of the trend line from the uh, lows of October out there, still trading below that area. So it's got some pretty decent uh, horizontal uh, resistance out here, and you can know as far as price point, you can call it the thirteen thousand two ninety ish range. Uh, if we take a look at uh, what did we miss out here? We got the NDX. Uh, we might have hit everything. Let's go look at the uh, socks. Let's look at the socks. Uh, and then we'll go look at the transports. Of course, I don't wear any socks, but let's go look at the socks anyways. Philadelphia Semiconductor Industry uh, Index, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, hit a, a level of horizontal resistance, the September 25th high, the gap down from uh, September 24th as well. That high was 391.92 out there. That level was hit last week on uh, Wednesday as well has traded off since then. You can see right now in this session, the bear is still in control of the uh, socks out there. Why do I say that? You're trading down towards the uh, bottom of its range. You've got a little uh, 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 upper shadow out there. So the bear is 
clearly in control of the uh, stocks. In order for this market to move, it's going to need this uh, index to move higher as well as the financials. So let's go take a look at the XLF, see what the XLF is doing. Well, the XLF has got a little energy in it. It's trading out at 1623. Uh, this is the strongest sector with inside the S&P 500. Uh, this is not the sector in my opinion, to be short, I think you want to find weak sectors out there, such as the technology sector. When you're long, you want to be long strong sectors. This one is a strong sector. What you had here on the XLF, it completed a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD up. It uh, did that on December the 12th, 12, 12, 12, 12. Uh, when it got up to a, a price point of 16.28, was also coming into a high volume high out there, which was your September 14th level, 122 million shares. Rejected that area. Uh, you know, two smaller. You get a, a nice, uh, get a close below it on December 13th on Thursday. Moved down with 34 million shares, lighter volume as it moved down on Friday as it came off that uh, most uh, the most recent resistance as complete I should say as it completed the A to B equals C D up came back with uh, 41 million shares. That's after moving up with 55 million shares and then coming back with 34 million shares on Friday. As you can see, the energy not a lot of sellers inside the XLF out there. Uh, the XLF looks like it wants to go back and tag that hor horizontal resistance level. You can call that maybe somewhere right around 1639 to, uh, I don't know, maybe 1633. That's only about six pennies out there. That's on the XLF. Let's go take a look at the energy sector. As long as we're inside the uh, sectors, inside the uh, S&P 500, the uh, energy sector here uh, trading below this uh, descending tops line, that's coming and taking a look at the descending top off of September 14th, down to the uh, area here where it had, uh, looks like an evening star formation candle, the October 19th, October 18th, and October 16th level. So you can say the energy sector got up above that level, test uh, got up above it on December 12th, but what it was really doing, it was testing the area where it most previously had gapped down this little window, which was still unrepaired. That means it's open, and what that means, means it is a resistance area. That low is uh, 72, 72. There were 10 million shares uh, as the energy sector got up there, got up with 10 million shares on November 6th uh, and still rejected that area. Got up with 9 million shares on December 12th, 12, 12, 12 on Wednesday out there. It's trading back below that. Looks to me like the next day, if, it, if the energy sector does sell off, your next level of support is the, uh, is the tested uh, window from November 19th. So we're really in a uh, kind of a, a narrow banded trading range out there that level being $69.81 out there. Our call in number is always 877-927-6648. Apple. We'll go take a look at Apple. We come back from break. Apple is trading below the uh, hammer candle, which is 505.75. Apple trading at 505.53 right now. If Apple closes below 505.75, folks, you do not want to be long my opinion, the Qs, you do not want to be long, certainly Apple. Apple setting up potentially a 200, a more than 200 point down move. 877-927-6648. Dow is up 60. S&P is up 7. Composite up 9. Small caps up 4. We'll be right back, folks. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. As we come back from break here, I said we'd go take a look at Apple. And that we are straightened down $6 in that change here out at 503 and Apple is uh, testing the uh, hammer candle on a daily basis on the uh, on the intraday chart, on the 30-minute chart here, testing the uh, bullish engulfing candle as it also made the low on November 16th. That low, again, we're talking about is 505.75. Now, the volume, uh, and that was at the 12 noon time frame when it made its low. The volume there, 5.3 million shares. We have uh, six minutes left in this trading session. It's trading below it now. Uh, Volume-wise, though, it has done 2.8 million shares. So it's got six minutes to go. Closes below that. Says, okay, I'm going to go to lower prices. We haven't seen it take it out with volume on the intraday on the 10-minute uh, chart. I'm sorry, on the 30-minute chart out there. Again, that is going up against 5.2 million shares out there. So we'll be paying attention to Apple. That is what is putting pressure certainly on the uh, markets here. And it's going to be important to watch where Apple closes today. Very important out there. Let's go to uh, Fish in Riverview. Fish, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hey, Steve. Good. How about you? Very good. Thank you very much. Hey. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah um, I'm uh, trying to help my father-in-law out in his uh, retirement okay. fund. And so I just want to give you that background. It's a retirement fund, but I'm looking for how about some positions in Sony and Home Depot okay. that were recently put on, say, a week or two ago. I okay. wanted to see, get your thoughts on stops for those two. 
Okay. So uh, if you put them on a few weeks ago, then, uh, you know, on the, in the case of Sony, good for you. You came off of the bottom there as it was completed to 1 to 1.2728 A to B equals CD up here. Now, what I don't like about Sony is as the Nikkei has really come off of the uh, bottom, you know, Sony's been, been a laggard there. In the case of uh, Sony, what you don't want to see this do now again, and again, you know, you're talking IRA, so you're probably looking at more longer term here. Um, yeah. You know, the daily chart, what you'd like to see it do is stay back up above this November 13th area. You're trading above it right now. That high is uh, $10.83, you're 1096 here right now. But let's put this on a, a weekly chart. And so on a weekly chart, you know, your stop really ends up having to be the swing point low, you know, where you got in. You know, okay. on, on Sony, but the Sony Sony's got a lot of work to do. Sony, what Sony has not had has not had any kind of a sign of strength off of the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, no sign of strength. So, so that one, that one is a, that one is a. I would rather if you're trying to play the Japanese a Japanese bounce, I would rather you find. I think I don't know if it's EWJ or something like that. Might be the ETF for it on a buy that on a pullback, then go too heavily weighted into uh, Sony. Until you see okay. a sign of strength, so uh, you okay. know. Go ahead. Could you give me a number on the um, just a suggested stop, specific stop on that one? Did you say ten eighty three? Well, uh, I no I, on the daily base from a trade standpoint, you, what I was saying is you don't really want to see it close back below that level because you got this high volume bar out here from November fourteenth, and that low is nine seventy seven. So I, I just think on Sony, you just have to be careful because there was you've had a nice little move. Off of, let me just put this the relative strength out here. See if we got really into oversold conditions. What it did, you know, on the on the relative strength indicator, it's not overbought yet, but it's moving up towards that area. I just think that I, I think that the Nikkei is potentially staging a pullback here. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, moved up into so the Nikkei gaps up last night, moves up. We'll go, let's go over to the Nikkei. So I'll just kind of to put this together for you. So the Nikkei, as soon as I can get it up here on the screen here, it gapped up last night, and and what it did was it sold off the entire night. Now what it was doing was it, it traded just slightly above the point seven eight six retracement. But how this came off the bottom versus Sony, and the bottom here was in uh, June. You know Sony's been a real laggard there. So again, if you're going more for the uh, you know trying to play the Japanese market uh, and go long, Sony's had Sony's been weak. You know, versus versus okay. strong out there. Now, here's what you're going to want to really watch, uh, and that is tomorrow. Is the question is with the uh, Nikkei having sold off all night long and closing at its session lows, it has the possibility of gapping down. And the reason is that the yen is also made 100% move of a move, so the yen wants to move back or at least move sideways. And if uh, if if after getting to a stretched area, if after getting the point seven eight six, you get an island reversal here. If the Nikkei starts moving back, I would think that Sony would also start moving back. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, so I'm just. I think you got to you got to really be paying attention to two charts out there, and that is the uh, the Nikkei. And if the Nikkei uh, gaps down this morning, doesn't uh, you know this this evening, I should say, and uh, gaps down and doesn't get up to uh, ninety eight twenty six during its trading session, you will have an island reversal out there at the uh, top. Just like it had an island reversal when it made its bottom on June 4th out there. And I think there was right. one other one you wanted to look at. So if you hold, yeah. if you hold on through the break, sure. we'll go back to fish in uh, Riverview, Riverview. Right now we've got the Dow up 53 points. S&P's up 6. We'll be right back. heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter Market Insights gives traders, investors and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides 
traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow's up 59 points right now. We're going back out to Riverview to our man uh, Fish. Now, Fish on uh, Sony, the average true range is 21 cents. So from a stop standpoint, I would, uh, you know, let it run. I'd probably have a stop, but at least 21 cents below the uh, close of uh, Friday. Probably maybe multiply 21 cents times 1.618. And uh, that would be the uh, number that I would uh, use. Let the market take you out if uh, Sony continues to run. Uh, you know, and you want to keep a tight stop, and I would just uh, continue to take a look at moving that up as a, uh, you know, uh, uh, on top. I wouldn't get it anywhere below yes, uh, Friday's close in whichever number that you use, 21 cents or 21 times 1.618. So I hope that that helps you. Up, oh, fish there. Home Depot. Uh oh, and my. Okay. My I'm, guess is something you know, like did, the 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 sound was off and I didn't hear you, so I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. No. So, okay. So Home Depot was all I heard. Yeah. Um. The other one that I have is uh, Home Depot, and yeah. my guess for a stop on that, from looking at it, is about sixty-one forty-seven. Sixty-one forty-seven. So if we take a look at uh, Home Depot, 
6147. Now, this had a, a little sign of uh, strength here, more than a little sign of strength, pretty nice sign of strength on November 13th when it moved up with 21 million shares out there. And uh, so I would say, and the area was uh, tested a few trading sessions later, it was traded, tested on November 15th and November 16th out there. Um, I would say anywhere below 6031 might be, you know, the place okay. where I would take a look at uh, closing. I mean, if you, because from a longer term standpoint, I like Home Depot. And okay. if we go to the weekly chart here, what Home Depot has done, which is nice, is it's uh, it's working on an A to B equals CD up. And Great. the swing point on this was the June 4th level, which was 5288. That had 44 million shares, and it took that out convincingly the week of August 17th with 60 million shares. So what you're looking at is just one-to-one -one is 71.12, but more likely, you know, if it continue moving higher, 77.94 is where this thing wants to, you know, move to. Now, you know, you, what you don't want to uh, see here, and I'll put up the uh, monthly chart, what you want to be careful with on this equity here is as we come into December 31st, if this closes below 61.95 and straight at 62.58 right now, if it closes below that, what you're going to get is a, a bearish engulfing candle. Now you would need confirmation the following month, but uh, you know the uh, there the the first time there was a bearish engulfing that showed up was May 31st, 2012 but it totally was erased on the following move on, in June. So I would just be paying attention to those areas. But I like this as, I like this as a much better trade than, uh, than the uh, Sony trade out there. Okay. Not that Sony can't work out for you. Just keep a little yeah. bit tighter rein on that one, okay? Yeah, can I ask you one more, and it's a quick one. Yeah. Um, do you prefer SPXS or TZA at this point, if I was going to buy one or the other? You know, it's a, a great uh, question out there. Uh, I like uh, TZA better. Uh, and the okay. reason is just simply it uh, when you take a look at retracements that uh, that were made out there, the TZA was a weaker retracement than uh, the S and P 500 on the last move up. All righty, I think I think that covered it. All right, folks, let's go take a look at uh, some things that are popping and dropping. We've taken a look at Apple uh, still continuing its uh, descent. Uh, 504, 503.96, and so, you know, we, we, we've, I think we've outlined that pretty well. Let's go take a look at a couple things here moving. You've got the Chipotle, uh, that's up about five bucks. Uh, CMG is the uh, ticker symbol there. So let's go see what Chipotle is uh, doing here. This is a stock, okay, so this is moving down into an area where it broke down, and it's a uh, tested area, only tested here once. Whoops. Get back to it, a tested area of resistance. But Chipotle, let's come back and put this up on the chart here on the screen for us. So Chipotle coming into the area where it most recently broke down, which would be the swing point of October 18th. October 18th, this gets to a, a low of 283.11, does it with 2 million shares. Next trading session, ba-boom, on the way down. 6.4 million shares, gaps down, gets down to a low. That trading session out at the 239 level actually makes a low a few trading sessions later on October 23rd, does that uh, at a, a price level of 233.82. Now you can see here, claws its way back. Off of that low, clawed its way back on November 7th. That was 1 million shares going against even the more difficult, uh, you know, which is coming right back to where it broke down, the bottom of the gap of October 18th. That had 2 million shares. So it came back on 50% lighter volume. This thing has been traveling in a sideways consolidation range out here. And the high of that consolidation is the uh, candle of November 7th. That high was uh, 284.57. And the low is the uh, November 15th level out there down at the 253.39. If this closes today, Inside 283.11, it's a 282.23, and so far today it's gotten up to 283.83. Okay, so it's gotten inside. It's at least tested that area. If it closes back below that, so far volume-wise today, only 214,000 shares in the first hour of trading. We know that volume is uh, lopsided on the uh, in the first 30 minutes as well as the last 30 minutes out here. So even if we just multiplied that by 6, You'd be at 1.2 million shares. Shouldn't have enough to even bust up into October 18th. However, if it closes in there, it will have uh, 
it will have repaired the window. That no longer would be a resistance zone for me. The resistance, then now I would just simply move that line to the top of the October 18th candle, and you'd want to see the 293.57 level tested as a possible short. However, you must wait, or you should wait. You don't have to. You can do anything you want. But you should wait for a bearish candle signal to, uh, uh, to uh, show itself to you before you would consider uh, taking a, a short trade on this. Chipotle, uh, if we take a look at the uh, longer-term chart on this, let's go take a look at a, a weekly chart. Absolutely nothing uh, good looking uh, here on the uh, weekly chart. Uh, this thing here, in fact, on the uh, weekly chart, if we take a look at A to B equals CD down patterns on this thing, uh, it has not completed its work to the downside. One to one, A to B equals CD, takes you down to one, 186.65 out there. I think uh, more likely this would do more than a one to one, A to B equals CD, about the 142 level. Now let's go see what the monthly chart here on Chipotle says. This is an ugly looking chart as well. In fact, um, if Chipotle uh, um, closes next month, let's talk, it, let's talk about January. Uh, right now with the candle formation, closes in January below 233.82. That's a continuation pattern to the uh, downside, and that's a nasty thing because uh, it says Chipotle wants to come all the way back down to the uh, lows, and that's like 48 bucks or so, 60 bucks, 60 to 48 bucks. Not there yet, but the A to B equals CD down. Uh, let's go ahead and draw this in on the uh, monthly chart out here as it came off to, of its highs. Still in, it uh, looks to me like still in the uh, markdown phase out here. Again, one to one is 196, but one to two, 141 is more likely where Chipotle would be headed to. On the daily chart, wait for some additional signs before you would pull any triggers out there. Uh, let's go see what else we've got here. Moving and grooving. You've got, uh, ooh, how about this? Let's go see what's moving this. Caribou Coffee, C-B-O-U. And let's see here. What is it? I, my. Uh, so let's see, I can't, I can't tell what uh, what is going on here. Something with regard to law firm seeks a higher price for shareholders. Well, let's go take a look at the equity anyways, see what it's doing. The reason why I say that is because it's up 30% here. So C-B-O-U, maybe they've got a, a tender offer uh, from someone. For some reason, it's not showing up on my screen, so I apologize for that. C-B-O-U, we can still go see what it's uh, trading into. It's got volume out there. So uh, now what it's trading into is where it last broke down. It got a nice big... A sign of weakness. Of course, today it's up in that same area, so it's moving into that supply line. This broke down here uh, on the uh, 2nd of, of uh, May, and the uh, level, the swing was uh, 1693 down to a low of 1633, 185,000 shares, but the breakdown volume was uh, two, uh, 1.8 million shares. Today, on the way up here, of course, it's got a little shooting star candle, is 2.4 million shares. So it's got volume out here today, and I apologize, this is just not showing up on my screen like it should. Oh, let me pull this across. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I just figured it out. It's my, uh, it's my computer savvy, or lack of savvy. So where do they get a buyout? To be acquired by coffee, to be acquired by John A. Bankheiser for $340 million. All right, so we'll, we'll just uh, forget this stock chart. Let's go take a look at, uh, how about Goldman Sachs? GS, we haven't looked at Goldman Sachs in what seems like forever. It's trading up a couple of bucks here. Let's go see what Goldman Sachs is uh, trading into. Uh, having a nice uh, move here today. Looks like it's going into the area where it most recently broke down. Let's uh, delete this from the uh, screen. Let's add... Let's just simply add uh, relative strength indicator so we can see what it's doing. So, yeah, Goldman Sachs uh, moved down on the 7th of November, uh, does that with 7 million shares. Uh, so that's trading into, it's got a little gap out there. Let's draw the line across the uh, screen here. Let's go take a look at the uh, volume this morning here as it trades up into that level. Let's put the uh, volume line on the uh, bottom of the uh, screen so you can see the volume as it moved down was 7 million shares so far in the first hour, hour and 15 minutes of trading, uh, 1.5 million shares. So it's got some pretty decent volume uh, to go try to tackle that area. Uh, if this uh, gets above 123.12, closes back below 123.12, you'll have an area of resistance here for Goldman uh, Sachs out there. Uh, if it can close above that level, it'll go tag the swing point from November 6th. That only has 3.9 million shares out there. And with today's volume at uh, 1.5 million shares, should have plenty of volume to go tag that high. That level on November 6th is uh, 124.30 to 126.73. But right now, 
the piece of information, the release of information, perhaps coming as it uh, tests the uh, gap. Again, that price range, 123.12 uh, and to a low uh, to 120, uh, 124.30. That would be the price range of Goldman Sachs out here. Let's go take a look at a few things. Moving to the downside, you got Under Armour, UA. Uh, that is uh, trading down uh, about, uh, where is it, about a buck 70, about 3.5%. Let's go see what Under Armour is uh, doing out here. Moving back into an area where it had a, a sign of uh, strength. That was this gap up. Let's go take a look at these areas here. That no longer is a support zone. Uh, the reason being is that it just simply closed that window. That window was fixed. That window was fixed here on the trading session of December 13th. Uh, the volume there where it broke out was, uh, it had a nice breakout, was 10 million shares. It's trading back below that area. That says that uh, Under Armour now wants to go down and test the swing point low of July 12th out here. That low is 44.07, the high is 46.60. Volume-wise out there, 2 million shares coming down today so far with 1.1 million shares. So it's got volume as it attacks that level out here. Uh, Under Armour trading below uh, all of the most recent signs of uh, strength. There's another one out here, which is the candle from April 20th with 7 million shares. Low of that was 47.06. You are below that. Uh, that also says if uh, Under Armour could be setting up another A to B equals CD down here as it takes out the swing point. That has 2.8 million shares. That's November 9th. And let's see, we had uh, 1.7 million shares on, when, on Thursday. Friday, only 1.5 million shares. So we'd like to see more volume on uh, this equity uh, from an A to B equals CD down. If you do take a look at what that A to B equals CD down does, we'll take this uh, larger one. We're going to go from the highs of September 14th down to the uh, November 9th area. Again, remember that has not taken out that level on volume, uh, but one to one says forty-three dollars and fourteen cents. Let's go see what you've got. And the one to one point two seven two, more likely the uh, target uh, gets you down into the area where it really last had any kind of uh, sign of strength, uh, which would be the uh, January twenty-sixth level. That is on Under Armour. Let's go. Let's go take a look at the ETF indices themselves. Let's go take a look at the diamonds, the spies, the small caps, the IWM. Uh, which is the Russell. So we've got the small caps up here on the screen. Small caps giving you a, a, uh, a reversal day, key reversal day on December the 12th out there. It was the only ETF and index that did that. Also another reason to answer Fish's question that we're going to choose either the S&P to be short or the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 gave you a nice little weak signal with that uh, key reversal date and bearish engulfing candle on December the 12th out there. Uh, today's trading session, uh, trying to get up into that candle, actually is. The low of that candle on December 12th is 82.77. It's traded 82.78 right now. Volume up there was 40 million shares. Today's trading, 10 million shares. So it's got some decent uh, energy behind it. However, what, uh, what you'd like to see here, what it has not done, the IWM, you'd like to see it close below the uh, session where it gapped up on December 10th, that low now 82.21 has not closed below that. That is its support level, really the support level on the IWM. Let's go identify what the real support level is. It happens to be this candle from November 29th. So let's draw that. We'll put uh, red, put that in red across the screen. Why? Because you've had a test of that level three different times now. So it gaps up November 29th. It does it with 53 million shares. 81.62 is the uh, low there. You can see it tested it with 37 million shares. At 37 going against 53. On the 4th of uh, October, tested with 40 million shares. On the 5th, rejects that area. And on the 6th, uh, 31 million shares. Uh, that area is, if you are long, you do not want to see it close below. I would, in this case here, from a long standpoint, you don't want to see it close below November 28th candle, the high there, 81.31 with 51 million shares. If it gets inside there, the next uh, area for it to pull back to, quite frankly, happens to be the November 19th area. Dow is up 52, S&P's up 7, Apple still struggling, trading below that 505.85 level. It's trading out at 504 and a little bit of change. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back.
you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success, and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow up 55 points, S&P up 8. And, uh, you know, we've got a couple of great uh, promotions uh, going on here. And we always have great promotions uh, going on here at TFNN. Uh, we've got our uh, Salvation Army Tiger Dollar Sale that goes on through the uh, 19th. And today is the 17th, so you've got two more days on that. You want to take advantage of that. 
uh, that if you use any services or you're considering using any services here at TFNN, you certainly want to go over there, invest in yourself, uh, buy Tiger Dollars. 500, for example, gets you 625. It's a 25 percent bonus. A thousand is worth 1250 in uh, Tiger Dollars. In addition to that, you're going to get five or 10 percent uh, additional. Uh, a contribution that we'll make on your behalf to the Salvation Army. You'll get a letter. It's tax deductible. You'll be helping yourself. You'll be helping others out there. So all the details, again, on the homepage of TFN.com. Take advantage of that by December 19th. Speaking of December 19th, if the market does decide to, uh, uh, you know, move up into uh, December 19th out there, it's actually very bearish. Very bearish because there is a uh, there is an aspect that is occurring on December 19th, and I've got uh, one of my charts. Uh, you know, you heard the commercial talking about the the amount of work and energy that I put into each uh, newsletter out there. If you haven't had a chance to uh, test drive that, do yourself a favor and do it for 30 days. Uh, not just will you be educated, uh, but uh, you know a lot of great trades out there. December 19th is a, a key date of all the aspects that occurred during 2012. This one here worked great at identifying identifying bottom reversals that identifying bottoms and tops out there. And uh, so if the market uh, were to uh, move up into December 19th, uh, that would be, and I'm not saying take out even the highs from a few trading sessions ago, just simply gradually move higher out there. That would be very bearish out here. You'd Quite frankly, you'd prefer to see a pullback going on here because right now I'm short, so I am uh, not just am I short in stature, which that's not even true, but uh, short the uh, markets out here. And so I'm grappling a little bit with is this uh, is, a, is a price going to move down into December 19th or is it going to move higher? You can test drive my newsletter, Mastering Probability. You can uh, underneath Breaking News, you'll see the link there. You really should uh, use that. You really should test it out because of the education and well, as well as so many other wonderful things that are part of that uh, newsletter service. Every newsletter is about 40 to 50 pages worth of uh, information out there. But I make it so that it's not a novel. Makes it easy to read. So as we uh, take and stay tuned here uh, today, we got Basil Chapman from 11 to 12, Larry Pesavento 12 to 1, Daryl Martin 1 to 2, David White 2 to 3, Ken Shreve 3 to 4, and Tom O'Brien show from 4 to 6. It's all about Apple today. You want to be paying attention to the Apple chart that's going to give you your biggest indication here. Uh, the 30-minute chart hasn't had the volume to bust through the uh, hammer candle swing point low, the bullish engulfing on the 30-minute chart, and that's the 50570. Five level. It is trading out at 507.57. Of course, you expect what you should expect here is a little bit of a uh, bounce here in Apple. Could be more than just a little bit, but you should expect a uh, bounce here as it works off these oversold conditions here. Of course, what Apple has not been able to do here, uh, going back to about the 2:30 time frame on December the 12th, 12, 12, 12, 12 on Wednesday, is get up above the 50% level of the relative strength. It can try to move up there, works off some of its appetite, its oversold level and then continues lower. A close below on the daily basis of 505.75. That is the hammer candle, and if you're long, it just simply says you are wrong. So be careful out there in Apple. Remember this, folks. You have an amazing power within yourself, and that power is so strong that it will produce a life of abundance. It'll create or it will cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces, and create fantastic, loving families. Thanks so much for being a part of the TFNN family. Have a great Tuesday. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Take care, folks.